everyone, we're back again in my kitchen for another bake. I've had several people ask me to do some gluten-free recipes. The pavlova that we made a couple weeks ago was naturally gluten-free. There was no flour or anything else in it that contained gluten. Today's recipe, which is uh, raspberry bars, uh, does call for all-purpose flour. Now, I thought because these were bars with kind of a crusty bottom and a um, crumbly top, that it would work just fine to substitute the all-purpose flour with this Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one flour. This is actually potato flour, rice flour, xanthan gum, it's a mixture. And I did that yesterday, I did a trial one run because I'd never done that before. And it worked out just fine. They were really nice. Today I'm using all-purpose flour, but either way it works really well. Now I will say this, um, I've been told um, that this does not always work perfectly well, like my chocolate cake or my scones. If you decided, oh, I'm gonna make them gluten-free, I'm gonna use this instead, uh, I don't know how that would turn out. It says on the bag that it's fine for your recipes, cakes, cookies, brownies, pancakes, but I've had several people tell me it's not the same texture or quality, so you just have to experiment. So anyway, today we are going to put together another really easy recipe. I'm trying to make these easy so that you'll enjoy it. Um, some of my recipes aren't so easy and I will venture into those down the road, but for now I want to just share some easy recipes with you. So, um, raspberry bars. We are gonna start with our flour. And I'm not gonna give you amounts because the recipe is always attached to the video. If you go under the video to the title and go to the right, there's a little tiny arrow. Click on that and the recipe will drop down. That way I don't have to remember all the, how many ingredients, how much of everything. So there's our flour, which can either be this one, the gluten-free, or it can be all-purpose. Quick cooking oats. This is not instant oats that you mix up in your microwave. This is quick cooking as opposed to um, steel cut or old fashioned. You wanna get the quick cooking. So, and if you're doing gluten free, check the bag and make sure that your oatmeal says that they're gluten free because some oats are not. They're processed in a facility that has wheat or soy or whatever. So, and then we're gonna add some nuts. Now, I like walnuts in this recipe, but I think that pecans might be tasty as well. I like to chop them pretty fine. You don't want big old clumps of nuts in your in your recipe. So, and you know, when you're buying nuts, uh, if you don't wanna chop them, then just uh, buy them already chopped. But in the store, I think they're still gonna be a little coarse and you might wanna chop them more. And please check the dates. When nuts go rancid, they ruin the taste of your recipe and they're not healthy. So always look at the dates on your, on your bags of nuts. Then we have some brown sugar and some white sugar. And I will tell you that after making these yesterday, I think it would be perfectly acceptable to cut back a little bit on the sugar if you want to. I would cut back on the white, not the brown, because I think the brown gives it a lot of nice flavor. But I've had some other people say to me, hey, can I cut back on the sugar and I think it was my chocolate cake recipe. I've never done that. I don't know how that would turn out, but I said, go ahead and try. On this recipe, I don't think it would make a whole lot of difference. So, I'm gonna turn, this is all dry ingredients. I'm gonna turn it on low speed and just blend the dry ingredients right now and hope it doesn't flip out, because it'll be always, there we go. So yeah, we're just mixing dry ingredients right now. And, you know, sometimes brown sugar, if you've had it a while, can get really hard. Uh, in your container, if you want to throw in a slice of bread or if you're afraid of the gluten in the bread, uh, a marshmallow or two or a couple of slices of fresh apple will soften up your brown sugar in a couple days. So we've got this mixing and I'm going to turn it off right now and I'm just going to feel around in there and make sure I don't have any of those really hard pieces of brown sugar that you know, sometimes you'll find a rock almost in there. You don't want that. And I don't think my brown sugar had any of that in it because I keep my brown sugar pretty soft. So I'm gonna just make sure it's really mixed well. And then, whoop. I wanted to 
get my butter. Butter should be room temperature, but it was so warm in here today, it was practically melting. So I, for five minutes, stuck it back in my freezer. But this is still really soft. So we're just going to gradually add the butter chunks. I just um, set it out on my counter last night and softened it. Normally I would take it out, cut it into chunks and let it soft. That's why it looks kind of globby instead of nice little cubes today. But we're just going to mix this until it's crumbly. We do not want to cream the ingredients together. That's not the texture you want. And keep it on low when you're doing this. It's probably going to take about two minutes. off and just knock some of this butter off that's collecting around the top of the mixer. But as you can see, it's just coming nice and crumbly. If you don't have a mixer like this, you could use a handheld mixer. You could use your food processor if you're very careful and don't over overdo it. Um, but this works really well. And if you didn't have any of these things, you could use your hands, like we did with my scone recipe. Just work it in until it's crumbly. So here we go. We're going to finish mixing this up. Okay. While it was mixing, I went ahead and added my salt and my baking powder as well. And if you want to come over and take a look at this texture, this is just a nice, damp, crumbly mix. And that is exactly what you want. I have a prepared pan. I love parchment paper. It's my best friend in the kitchen. I, as you will notice, I use it just about every time. You can either use parchment or foil, but I find parchment uh, to be better. It doesn't tear as easily as foil. So just cut out a nice big strip of it I like to buy it on a roll, not in pieces. And I pulled it out and I creased in here with my finger, creased around the edge, and got it to line this pan really nicely. And the reason we're doing this is when this is cool, we're going to lift the whole thing out and we can cut with and get really nice pieces rather than getting in here and trying to dig a spatula. So, so what we're going to do is we are going to put two thirds of this in pan for the bottom crust and you just spread it around you don't need to just eyeball it you know two-thirds doesn't have to be exactly and as long as you have enough to nicely cover the top of your raspberry filling then we're good. So, yeah, that looks about right. So I'm just going to press it down. You don't need to press it ridiculously hard, but you do want it to just be firm so it sticks when you cut it later. So we're pressing it down. And we're going to bake this in our oven for about 20 minutes you'll start to see it get a little color around the edges and just ever so slightly brown. It's going to bake again, so you don't want it to be nice and dark. It's just till it starts to color, like I said, about 20 minutes. So I'm gonna put this in the oven and then we will come back when this is baked and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. So I've taken the crust out of the oven. I actually let it sit for about five minutes. You might notice when you take it out there might be a little puff or something a little not a bubble but just raised up a little bit it gives it a chance to settle I've taken my raspberry jam out of the jar and put it in a separate bowl so that I can stir it up and get some of the lumps out of it I mean we're using jam not preserves so there's not really any fruit lumps in here but just getting it smooth so when we spread it 
it spreads nice. And you're gonna use between 12 and 17 ounces maybe of jam. Kind of just depends. I like a nice amount on there. So you just take your offset spatula and if you have one, if you don't, it's okay. I just really love these. They're good for lots of things. And spread the jam all the way around to all the corners. You don't need to keep it away from the edges. Some recipes might tell you to do that when you've got a filling in something because they don't want it to stick to the pan. But because we've got parchment paper here, we don't need to worry about that. So we're just spreading it as evenly as you can. I'm gonna add the rest. I kind of just judge it. I think this was um, about 18 ounces. This is a pretty good sized jar. And you know, if you're not a fan of raspberry, I imagine you could use another jam. I just think uh, the raspberries and oatmeal go really nice together. I like those flavors, but you know, try something else if you're not liking raspberries a whole bunch. So we just spread it on there, get it as even as we can. And we're gonna put our topping on the jam. There, I'm not gonna press with that too much more. So my hands are clean, of course, and here's the rest of our topping. And we're just gonna sprinkle it on, covering everything. in the oven and bake it for about 25 minutes. We just want it to look lightly golden brown and the jam should be bubbly. And once we get that baked, we'll come back after it's cool. I think I'm gonna wait till it's completely cool so I can show you how we take it out and cut it. So spread it around even, try to get it as even as you can. You don't press this in, but I just kind of tap it so that um, when we go to cut it, it's actually baked in and kind of attached itself to each other rather than all this, but don't press it into the jam too much. Just tap it in there. So this is gonna go back in the oven for 25 minutes. I'll take it out and when it has cooled, We'll come back together. Thank you. We're back. It's been two or three hours. We baked our raspberry squares and got them a nice golden brown. They're cool. We're going to take them out of here. And this is what the parchment is, or foil is good for. Just lifting them right out like this. Let me get rid of this. And then you just Peel this back. Get a nice big knife, sharp knife. You can cut these in squares or um, rectangles. I tried triangles once, it didn't get a nice clean cut. But anyway, just kind of come through and cut these. this. I think they're pretty rich, so you don't need really big pieces. And this makes a whole lot. So, you know, you're either going to have to freeze these. I'm going to cut this, this. Freeze these or share them. And I think sharing them is more fun. So, and this is what I like to do. I like serving them in these little cupcake cups because when you pick them up, you've got something to kind of catch the crumbs, and it's just neater, and it's, I think it looks better. So if you were having a tea and you wanted to serve these, this would be a nice way to do it. So that is our raspberry square recipe. It's simple, it's really tasty, and like I said, if you are in the mood to cut back the sugar a little bit, you can do that, I think, pretty easily with this recipe, but I always suggest you try it first, the way the recipe's written, and then adjust from there. See you next time.
bye